Thank you for being here. You're here because you're a seemingly together woman who is done succeeding under the weight of anxiety. You're sick of hearing, just relax, stop thinking about it, stop thinking like that, just get over it. Or my favorite, you're too sensitive. Let's be real, no matter who says it, your boss, your employee, your son, your husband, your daughter, your client, or one of your parents, let's be real, you can admit it. You wanna punch the person right in the face for saying it. You wanna punch them for saying you're too sensitive. Or maybe you struggle not to burst into tears. Either way, telling you to just relax or whatever other asinine platitude doesn't work. In fact, it only makes you feel worse. Or maybe you've gone the therapy route, which is better, but retelling your story with every new therapist is exhausting. It's actually re-traumatizing because the question, why are you anxious, is really not helpful. You just are. You can recount your childhood difficulties or teen traumas, and of course, you can recount your relationship woes. But in the end, although you've gotten some deeper understanding and at least had someone to talk to, here you are, still bombarded with constant negative thinking and an elephant on your chest. I feel your pain. I see how you look in the mirror and hate yourself. I know how you feel. And when someone says, just get over it, you feel ashamed. And when you hide how you're feeling inside, you feel alone. Or you've told yourself, there's no use, I'm just wired this way. But there is help, and I have some strategies that I know will work very well to help many of you be calm and peaceful. My strategies don't work for everyone, though. So how will you know if they work for you? Let's start by taking a simple assessment answer either yes or no to the following questions. Grab a piece of paper, pause if you need to, and just write down a Y or an N. We'll tally your score at the end. Are you feeling tired and drained too often? Don't overthink your yes or no, just shoot. How about aches and pains, including headaches and a stiff neck? This is a big one. Do you ever wonder if loving you is too difficult? Yes or no? Do you feel that every little thing is harder for you than for most people? When someone asks, how are you? Do you say fine, but secretly want to tell them you're a mess inside? Do you try and tell yourself positive things as a way of calming down your mind? Does talking to yourself positively ever turn into telling yourself to shut up or just get over it or calm down already? You've heard of burnout, but you, could you aptly rename it joy out <laughs> because you're missing out on the joy in your life? Does anxiety keep an invisible shield around you that keeps your loved ones at a distance? Okay, last question. Deep down, are you beginning to feel that you are missing out on happiness despite all your accomplishments? The assessment is done. If you got more than two yeses on your paper, I've got good news and I've got better news. The good news is that none of the problems I just shared with you is the real issue. And therefore, you don't need to fix each one individually. The better news is that I'm going to help you go deeper to where all of these seemingly separate issues originate so you can fix the root cause. You ready? Awesome. Okay, tell you a little bit about myself. You've probably seen that I'm a former supermodel. The supermodel stuff was obvious. I was jet setting around from my base in New York City, spent free weekends at my country house in Connecticut, worked with world famous photographers and top magazines. It was cool seeing my face, staring at me from newsstands with Vogue, Mary Claire, Elle, all typeset across my forehead, or to run into a drugstore for toothpaste and lotion and brush up against a giant display proclaiming that I was one of Revlon's most unforgettable women in the world. 
It was even cooler being privy to the newest and hottest trends, you know, whether in makeup, destination choices, workouts, or music. This all filtered down from the epicenters of fashion. That was being a supermodel. And now let's chat about me being a former, former super mess. As pretty as my exterior life was, my interior life was the polar opposite. What was going on inside of me was constant sadness and anxiety. Bring to the mix brutal insomnia, a splash of self-hatred, a cup of PTSD, a sprinkling of self-medication, a shot of alcohol, and chronic Lyme's disease, all to a girl cruising at 33,000 feet, flying to location after location to look beautiful, and what you got from that concoction was a super mess. The reason I, you know, the reason I share the way I felt is so you will know that even though my nut my life looked magnificent from the outside, it never got rid of the pain I felt on the inside. All that outer stuff didn't help how I felt. Thank God I am no longer a mess, but it's the techniques I use now to help my clients that saved me. Being that much of a mess pushed me to figure out how to shut down the emotional crazies. I compiled everything that helped me to stop the horrible anxiety. And it's great that I do have a master's in counseling. I have a few decades of private practice under my belt and I was a psychology professor, but it's because I have been trained in the very modalities that I used on myself and now teach that I have come up with the right formula to end the emotional crazies and help people shift into inner peace. Every exercise I use with my elite clients came from my own journey to uncover peace in myself. Peace and calm is hidden under the anxiety and buried under all the stress. It's right there waiting for you. You just need the right shovel. And all of my clients had similar patterns that were keeping them from experiencing their best lives. And once they recognized these patterns, which some were erroneous beliefs, they were finally able to begin their journey on unearthing their inner peace. Inner peace is waiting for you too. So let's roll up our sleeves and delve into the exact shifts you need to know. First, you see anxiety as a weakness, but really it's your strength. Anxiety originates as sensitivity. Sensitivity is a strength, it's a gift. You think you are weak because anxiety overtakes you, but you are actually strong because of all that you accomplish despite the anxiety. Think of all the stuff you get done while dragging the mind clutter, constricted throat and exhaustion around with you. You've been taught to see sensitivity as a bad thing, but it's not. However, sensitivity run amok is anxiety. And anxiety comes when you don't know how to manage sensitivity. And this is the problem, managing sensitivity. One of my model clients rewrote her story from, I'm an anxious person to, I am sensitive, loving, caring, and strong. She realized if I made it this far with this anxiety sitting on me, imagine how strong I am. She went on to work in Paris, New York, and London. What was the most impressive was not that she could endure the travel and show up for work looking amazing, but she loved roaming the streets on her days off. Another young woman she met on her travels is still a good friend of hers today. I don't know for you, but for me, it's one thing to say I did something. It's another to say I had fun doing it. <sighs> another problem pops up when you don't know how to manage your sensitivity. People may take advantage of you because let's face it, you're a good person. You feel their pain. You don't want to be judged yourself and you want to be gentle with them or help them. Unfortunately, some people take advantage of this or use it against you. This is a classic one. Someone is mean or sarcastic or rude or selfish or a jerk. And when you have the gall to bring it up or address their bullshit, they spew back, you're too sensitive. You're too sensitive. <laughs> like it's your fault they didn't uphold their end of the bargain or spoke to you rudely in a meeting or whatever other unconscious behavior they did. Like if you didn't have the big flaw. <laughs> the big flaw being you require some level of respect, aka too sensitive, their behavior would be just fine. So the message you gather is to stop being so sensitive. 
unhelpful message. You do not need to stop being sensitive. Again, your sensitivity is a gift. You have heightened intuition. Yeah? You have amazing intuition, yes? Think of how this has shown up over the years. You have a beautiful sense of compassion. You tend to choose your words carefully. People love that about you. Again, you don't need to stop being sensitive as, as maybe you've been trying to do. Conversely, you need to nurture your sensitivity while, and here's the key, protecting it. You need to protect your sensitivity. It's a genuine strength that most people have lost touch with. Man, think of all the stuff people watch, the violence, the horror. You know, we could discuss how desensitized people get, but I want to stay on track. Sensitivity is an asset. I know. It's what I've relied on with my clients all these years. A massive shift took place for me when I learned to protect my sensitivity. I began to use it with my clients, to feel into their challenges, sense their limiting be beliefs, and even channel for them. And voila, I pushed back from counseling people in my everyday life. The draining relationships began to slip away or transform. What you need to do to navigate normal society is not bury your sensitivity, but reframe how you use it, protect it, set boundaries around it, practice nurturing it, and choose where to use it. Which leads us to, we're at the part, next one. You think you're not kind or generous and you're wrapped up in your own problems, but really you're being kind and generous to everyone else first, which is leading you to depletion. If you answered yes to several more questions in our assessment earlier, how you are relating and showing up is not working. Chances are you're tired, weary, drained. You feel others' pain, anticipate their needs, try to keep the peace, all the while having to deal with your own emotions, life, career, children, partner. <laughs> you may even think that anxiety makes you a bad friend, when in fact it gives you more empathy. This is why you're a good friend. You, you can even ask research from the American Psychological Association. You have a lot of empathy and your friends appreciate that about you. Take, take a step back, right? And realize that the solution is not to give more or try harder to please everyone. Yes, being a good friend is important. Connecting with people is important. Being kind and generous is important, but at what cost? Like I mentioned, your sensitivity, you need to choose where to use it. What if there was a way to be a good friend, be empathetic, be kind and generous, and, and at the same time, be connected to your true self, full of vitality and peace. The solution is to nurture yourself, care for yourself, build yourself up, and clean up after yourself. Yes, I said it. Clean up after yourself. Clean up the fear, clean up the shame, clean up the guilt, clean up the anger, especially guilt and shame. Guilt is an emotion that is programmed into some of us, which drives us to take care of others at the expense of ourselves. Dr. David R. Hawkins said, guilt is connected to expectations of oneself or someone else. Expectations invite suffering. So ditching the guilt, the guilt lets go of lots of suffering. A client wrote this to me and I'm going to read it so I get it right. So here we go. Quote, shame, I hate that word. It feels terrible even to say it. I've always hated that word. Now I know why. I had bits of shame tucked everywhere in my body. I know it sounds weird and it was. Last week we cleared guilt and shame. I swear I could feel the shame leave my body and you ask me how I feel now. I feel like my body is lighter and I'm not disgusted with myself anymore. It was the shame I needed to get rid of, for sure. Maybe guilt too, not sure. Either way, thank you. Okay, end quote. So the same client, she started doing some of the techniques I teach in my program instead of a few non-necessary things she hated doing. What struck me most after she did this cleanup was how different she looked. 
And while her hair stayed the same color and her lip gloss was still translucent and her eyes were still hazel, her appearance actually changed. She looked sweeter somehow, gentle and younger. It is one of the many examples of depletion from being kind to everyone else first and how that shows on our faces. But when we are kind to ourselves first and know how to release the shame, release the guilt and fear of not being liked just as we are, we can truly be kind and generous and authentically connect to others. And speaking of connection, you worry that you can't connect with people well, but really you're not connected to your true self or higher self. While this may not seem relevant now, bear with me. I've been called controlling, have you? Being called controlling was a punch to my gut, punches to my gut. It happened more than once. I remember being embarrassed because the issue was anxiety and not some need to have it all my way. I also remember I was angry, angry that I was just trying to help things turn out well, angry that I was struggling inside and they saw the controlling part of me and not the deep sadness. Wanting or needing to control is a form of worry. You wanna know that things will turn out well, that the dinner party will be fun for the birthday girl, or your boss's business trip will go off without a hitch, or your child's education will be good, or you will pick the perfect partner, or you'll make the best investment decisions, on and on and on and on. When you insist, on figuring everything out now, trying to get everything worked out perfectly now, needing to know the future, you are, you are out of the flow of life, worrying about stuff you actually can't control on the outside. So the stress is not all about what is going on in your world, but the fear of uncertainty controlling your thoughts on the inside. Your mind doesn't know this. It's trying to help you by figuring it all out right this second. But really, it is draining your energy and stifling your flow and connection to guidance from your higher self. When you connect with your higher self, your uncertainty becomes curiosity and possibility. Let me see if I can explain this. Yes, we need to make goals, plans, outlines, and guideposts. Let's say you wanna get your MBA. This is your goal. You can either worry about all that, right? The prerequisites, Mm, the cost, what college, online or on campus or both, convincing everyone in your life it's a good idea and all the reasons why you deserve to get an MBA. How you didn't do well in the last math class you took, how you probably have to take math in this program, where would you find a tutor, should you study math before you start? My goodness, you get the picture. One big jumble of worry which saps any joy and energy that you could have used towards your goal of getting your MBA. What if you had trust in your connection to your true self? You could spend five minutes or two minutes on beautiful energy techniques to get, a cent to get yourself centered and you could ask your true self, hey, sweetheart, true self, higher self, I'd like to get an MBA. What should I do first? And voila, it hits you. Call your old roommate, Claire. Claire's best friend is the alumni president of a university nearby. Is this the whole plan? No, but it's an inspired start. One you may have missed if you are mired in the fear of uncertainty controlling your thoughts. Therefore, moment to moment, day to day, you learn to trust. You don't figure it all out by worrying through the long nights, but through your connection with your true self. You have the answers to each next inspired step. And speaking of inspiration, am I a matchmaker? No. But can this work open you up to love? Yes. Here is what a client reported, and I'm gonna read it so I get it right. Here we go. She reports, again, I owe it all to you. You gently nudged me when I needed to be kept encouraged, uh, needed to be and kept encouraging me that it only took, takes one. Okay, I got it. By being honest with me, you taught me that I could be honest with myself and others. The affirmation that yes, men do want to hear changed the way I communicated. Asking myself what is for our highest and best good or 
How should I say this? This works so much better than trying to follow the rules of dating that I knew. The two of us, two of us have had mind-blowing experiences. It's so nice to feel like a woman again. I just find it hard to believe that I can have this kind of experience at my age and with someone his age. I'm on a pink cloud for sure. There's an exclamation mark. The only reason he left my house this morning is because we both needed to recharge. LOL, she put. I haven't been this happy in a long time. <sighs> so you can see how this gets every aspect of your life. And then another woman so beautifully wrote, it sounds so simple to listen so intently and with such stillness that you can hear the gentle whisper of the loving universe. It takes courage though, the courage to reach out and believe every time that you will receive an answer. <sighs> and now for the mother of all epiphanies, my real gift to you, the final one. This is for you to see that you need to ask for help. You believe you can't change, that you are doomed to be like this, or you've, been, or you've told yourself that there's no use, my mind is just wired this way. You think anxiety is all in your mind, but haven't realized your body has trapped the anxiety in it, so your body is stuck in anxiety mode. There are definite and proven ways to switch anxiety mode off. Myself and my clients are living proof that there are easy mind and emotion exercises that work just like physical exercises. Like I said before, telling yourself to just relax or whatever other asinine thing doesn't work, or God forbid someone else tells you to just relax. It only makes you feel worse. Also, continually trying to figure out what thoughts are creating it or what you need to do or not do, if you should get medication, whether a nap would help or maybe a glass of wine or if you should meditate or if you should stop eating this or that or stand on your head or, or F it, right? And move to an ashram and on and on. All this trying to figure it out jumbles your mind even more. Trying to figure out does not make you peaceful. It just feeds the mind's tornado of thoughts. You end up more wound up, nervous, and wired. Because unfortunately, once your body experiences anxiety, it can become a habit. The anxiety and fear of being anxious, anxious gets trapped in your body. It's not like you do it on purpose. In fact, you know, your body is trying to help you. So anxiety and all her cousins, worry, nervousness, whatever you call it, need to be stopped in the body first. Releasing the anxiety from the body is what the beautiful energy exercises do. You can ditch the tension headaches, tightness in your chest and throat, and all that yucky emotional stuff that goes with it. Just like you get into physical shape, one squat or one push up at a time, beautiful energy exercises get you into emotional shape, one exercise at a time. You have the power. All you need are the right steps, tools, support, and guidance. So a high level executive client after doing the very first exercise wrote, and I'm gonna read it. And it's important to remember this was after the first exercise. So it works after just a few moments of practice. Okay, she wrote, my body is calm. I didn't know it was possible to feel like this. And then um, I had another client, she wrote, I always felt like the most anxious person in any group. I was resentful that my actions took raw determination and will. I remember thinking, well, she says shit. Yeah, so shit. Why can't my neighbor wave at me? Why can my neighbor wave at me from her yard while running through the sprinkler with her son? She has a full-time job too. I'm worn out. I had this gnawing feeling I was missing out on being happy because I was wired incorrectly. I fretted over every detail of everything till I was an anxious puddle. When I managed to visit with friends, I could report accomplishments but couldn't muster true happiness. Your program was transformational. My body relaxed. I didn't know it was possible to feel like this. I'm not anxious all the time. I know it's because of the exercises and sessions. Here are a couple things that happened recently that would never have happened before. 
Oh, I love these because it's so particular. First, I sat and watched a TV program with my family and did not get up once to do anything. The second super specific thing I remember is I looked at myself in the rear view mirror and I looked well rested. I actually made a surprise sound. I smiled. I looked so much better. Still me, but not overwhelmed. <sighs> okay, so let's recap because I know I've given you many aha moments and important pieces to reflect on. Let me start by saying you are not weak, you're anxious. It's not the same thing. And anxiety is simply sensitivity without understanding boundaries, protection, and the conscious choice of where and how to use it. And while you're at it, why not consider stopping taking care of everyone else first? You may believe you're not giving enough <clears throat> and are swimming in your own ocean of problems, but really you're being kind and generous to everyone else first, which is leading you to drown under the added weight of exhaustion and depletion. Being tuckered out sucks. It really sucks. And you wonder if you're not connecting with people because of it. But the real question I'm asking you to consider is, are you connected to your true self? Are you connected to your true self? Imagine how your life would change if you were connected to your true self you would finally get a handle on the dreadful worry in your mind. And the last nugget, I got a last nugget of gold, is you can turn off the anxiety switch. You can, you. Yes, with guidance and support, and support, but you can do it. Starting from the very first easy and short exercises. You are not, you're not permanently wired this way. You are, given in this program a very definite and proven formula to switch off anxiety. Myself and my clients are living proof that inner peace, inc increased energy and joy are possible. My system transforms anxiety to inner peace and harnesses the power of women coming together. There is healing from helping others be healed. When we support each other's energy, we have compassion and empathy for each other. And lo and behold, this leads to finding the compassion and empathy for ourselves. How would you like to capitalize on the sensitivity and ditch the anxiety? I'll give you a brief overview of the beautiful energy program. Here we go. Week one, you complete your personal assessment so I may craft our sessions. During this week, I guide you into releasing fear with, accommodation, with a combination of energy techniques. You begin crafting your desires. This is done without a lot of talking about our troubles. Yes, support is given, and believe me, I care what has happened to you. But especially in our group sessions, we will not tell long stories of our pasts or even current dramas. If you feel the need, to tell who is to blame, why it isn't fair, how come you're such a mess, ad nauseum, this program isn't for you. Okay, week two, you learn to mentally ground and let go of guilt and shame. These emotions are massively attached to fear and are energy sappers. This part is crucial and may be one reason why the things you've tried before have not worked to get rid of your anxiety. Okay, next week, week three. I support you in gently moving out unworthiness through proven energy exercises specific to your third chakra. We safely, and with you as the central component, open up your beautiful belonging to the world. Don't worry about the whole chakra thing. Yes, the program follows the chakra system as well as the map of consciousness, but you won't be asked to memorize anything or even care about the underpinnings. You are asked, however, to do the work each week and experience the transformations. Next one, week four, you'll be halfway through, is all about building confidence. I do this stuff a lot with my model clients. They are practices that change how you show up in the world, not just your internal feelings about yourself, but we build those too. 
Okay, the next one, week five. You delve into what you like, love, and enjoy, further focusing on your desired life. You continue to let go of lower level emotions that rob your energy. You harness your willingness to be peace filled. Each week I designed it for you to have six days of active work. There is one session and one class per week. The other four days have uh, short exercises for you to do. They are very doable and you feel better after each one. It's all on video and audio and you'll have lifelong access to it. They're short, but every day it's for you to build your peace. Week six is all about communication <laughs> with yourself and the world. One technique I named, I have something to say. It's adapted from what I learned working with a healer in New York, Sarah Rubin. You are instructed to open up to your guidance, your higher self, all that great stuff. I'm going to ask you to show up fully and be open. This is not a program for you if you are determined to stay small, weak, or a victim. The Beautiful Energy program is for you if you desire to show up, be you, be powerful, be brave, and be willing to love yourself more and more. So week seven, you're educated about and shown how to enhance your intuition. Have you ever thought about how anxiety and fear would be eradicated if you knew I mean, really knew you could hear and follow your intuition. As my clients can attest to, I am fond of saying, there is a method to my madness. A, sp a specific order is key. We all want answers and next steps, but most skip the most essential part, which is preparation. The key is to prepare yourself to receive your purest gui guidance by ousting your fears, connecting with the people in your life, raising your confidence, illuminating your desires, and expressing your thoughts and feelings. Oh, I spent years and years laying this out for you. Okay, week eight. Believe it or not, it is in the last week that you take a peek at your childhood. Honestly, I guide you to clear up whatever may come up, but it's to examine your beliefs about your spirituality. You then tap into your own personal wisdom, yours. You'll see that this is not a DIY process. It helps tremendously to utilize the, in, the insight from my team, myself, and support from the group. You will also receive a bonus. Honestly, I'm super excited to include this, and no, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is. Let's just say it's amazing work developed by two friends of mine who have combined 45 years of experience as therapists. You'll see, I will only share with you the work I value and use myself. If you are ready to see how strong you are, feel more connected to those around you, be clear on what needs to change and experience calm while releasing negativity, it's time to take the next step. Fill out the form and then pick a time that works for you and my team to talk. Now it's time for you to use your sensitivity strengths. Are you meant to connect with me? Am I even someone you can relate to? Do I get you, right? You, it, this is for you to know. If you were to give yourself some good advice, would you book a call now? It's all available, a relaxed body, confidence, connection to what you love, a pipeline to your intuition and joy. It's just waiting for you to claim it. I am confident, I am confident that I can help you. You don't have to figure it all out or do it yourself. Book the call. My schedule often gets booked up fast, but let's talk. Allow me to share the journey that helped transform my life to fix the pain and the struggles you are feeling. You'll be on your way to a life of inner peace and joy. This is it, the moment of truth. Are you actually ready? I hope so, because there's nothing subtle about the change that's coming. It's time.